So let's, uh, can we get Courtney Steven on our screen? Uh, there he is sitting here. There he is. Raised on the roof out there. And <laughs> hey, Courtney, how's retirement, Are my you? friend? Hey, you know what? It feels a lot like being in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been retired for a year and a half, I guess, right? No, but listen, at least you can smile about it because we had Chad Jeter on here last week talking about joining the United States Air Force, and it was like he was eating glass, man. This was not an easy decision for him at all to, to walk away from pro ball. What's it been like for you? Well, you know what, man? Um, I can't empathize with that because – you give so much of your life, you sacrifice for years just for an opportunity, right? And nobody promises you that you'll actually make it, right? Like there's no guarantees that you'll actually ever put on uh, pads and a helmet and a pros. So to get there alone takes a lot. And then to be in that seat and try and hold on to it for as long as you can and then let go, I mean, that takes a certain amount of, of you know, courage, if you will, right? Because this is what we know. Um, I played pro football eight years, but I played football for 23. And I'm, I'm 31 years old, so that's a substantial part of my life. But for me, it was one of those things where I never cut a corner, right? I never, I never tapped out. I never, you know, did less than was required of me. If anything, I did my absolute best. And I feel like when you you give everything you have to offer, there's no regrets. So when it comes time, and, and right now is really, it's the time for me. Um, I feel good about it because what else are you supposed to do, man? This is what the coaches tell you every day is like, you know, empty your tank. And if you empty your tank, you'll have no regrets. Whatever score is on the board, you can live with it. So for me, um, it's a proud moment more than anything. I'm not sad. Of course, I'm gonna miss the locker room, but you know, the time is right. We know uh, very well put, by the way. You've had, obviously, great coaches in Hamilton. You sound like my dad, 26 years in the National Hockey League for him. And he said, empty your tank every single day because when the day's up and you look back at your career, you'll have no regrets. And it sounds to me, Courtney, like you have no regrets. But you mentioned all your years in the CFL. Tell me your contract status, please. Because four, seven years in Hamilton and then 2019 in Calgary, but the Ticats announced your retirement. So had you signed back with them or were they just doing it because you're once a Ticat, always a Ticat? No, I signed in December. So when I came back from, I was on a one-year contract in Calgary. So when that contract expired at free agency, I signed with Hamilton with all intent to play in 2020. And as we know, that season never came to fruition. So uh, it gave a lot of pause for everybody to look at the rest of their life and during that time you know i was still training staying in shape uh still fully focused on being a pro athlete but at that time you can't be a pro athlete like you're a dad you're a husband you're a brother you're a son you're all those other things and football is it has to be secondary because there's no football going on so i signed a contract in december with intent to play and from that time till now you know it's not a decision that you make overnight to retire. Like it's something that happens slowly. And especially with so much um, turmoil in the league. I mean, I don't know how there's turbulence. How else can you describe it? Like we're merging with the XFL. Uh, is the season going to happen? These teams have to vote. These players have to vote. Who's getting paid? Are we getting paid? Like all this stuff going on. How could you not as a father of two kids, how could you not for another job? How could you not think about an alternative? Because I'm the one who's going to be left holding the bag with, you know, like $3,000 worth of daycare every month to pay for if I don't do something responsible. So, yeah, I was um, intent on playing this season. I was training, waking up 430 like everybody else, going to work out before the kids were up. Uh, but in my, I guess, contingency plan, some really great opportunities came about. And I don't know if I'm necessarily ready to speak on them here, but mm -hmm. uh, the risk and the reward for playing football is not really there for me right now. You know, well, like you can, you can tear your ACL and if somebody's got COVID, they're going to the hospital before you and you got to just wait it out. And rightfully so, rightfully so. But um, contracts we talk about, right? Like there was a point in my, my career where I was making a good amount of money. And right now I'm closer to the end than I am to the beginning. So that's not the same situation. So I have to look in the mirror and say, do I want to put my noodle on the line? 
I don't think so because I'm confident that I could make more money outside of football than I can playing football. You're speaking for a lot of the guys that have made this decision over the last couple of weeks because that's what I keep hearing. But you know what? When you know, you know. When it's time to go, it's time to go. But, I mean, you noticed the other day that I was following you on Twitter, I noticed that you had put on a financial literacy course or were planning one in Toronto here in the pandemic. How did that go? As soon as I saw that, I'm like, ah, uh, he's going to be just fine. So tell me yeah. what made you want to do that. You know, uh, the pandemic illuminated a lot of things. I think it's Warren Buffett who has a quote that says, when the tide goes out, you can see who's swimming with no clothes on. <laughs> and um, there's, there's a whole bunch of people who I guess were, I don't want to say exposed in a negative way because nobody puts himself into a tough financial situation on purpose, right? It's just these, these, these things that we weren't taught. So uh, myself, I felt somewhat privileged and I, I had a responsibility to share my passion which is football on one hand but also I have a passion for financial literacy investing and generational wealth so i put together a course um and i shopped it around to some local high schools and some universities and i ended up you know just teaching basic financial literacy to a handful of different groups and it's very well received because there's a need for it and there's certain things that we all are going to do buy a car, buy a house, use a credit card, but no one is teaching us how to do them on a fundamental level. So that's really what the course was about. And, um, you know, I'm going to continue to do that because whether that's a career or not, I don't think it is. Um, it's something that is a passion of mine and there's a need for it in the community and there's nobody better to fill the role than me. I was watching Courtney and you didn't even know who I was. So, uh, so, so there, so good for you for doing that. And so all these years with the tie cats, some really good years, what comes to mind mm -hmm. when you think of them, what comes to the mind first? Man, I think about being in training camp in my rookie year and, um, just going so hard in, in practice that I actually sprained my, my shoulder before we even played a preseason game. And just some of the older guys being like, hey, look, if, if you want to play 10 years in this league, tone it down a bit, like relax, okay? Um, and and that was kind of just a point where I was just so hungry and so ready to attack this thing that I've been waiting all my life for. Um, but I found, I found that fine line between uh, pushing it and actually, you know, doing my, my teammates a favor and not putting anybody's health at risk. Because when you just get in the league, like, you just want to go, go, go. And um, to me, it was the beginning of that transition from just being a, a, a player to being a pro, right? And I had a lot of great coaches, especially in Hamilton. I had a lot of great coaches who really taught the game, who really uh, helped me develop as a player, as a person. And I think that's really what I'm going to remember. It's those relationships, you know, people like uh, Jeff Reinbold, right? People like um, Philip Lolly, people like Coach O, people who, you know, took the time to teach you little things that made a big difference. And um, I think that's what any player would say is, is the people that really make the experience, whether it's the fans, the coaches, the other guys in the locker room. It's, it's all about the relationships. Forgot Lolly was in Hamilton. What a beauty he, that guy is. <laughs> well, and Ryan Bold, obviously. But please do me a favor and tell me what you remember about the 2013 Grey Cup because I was calling Ryder games at that time and I heard when you guys stepped off the playing Grey Cup week and it was minus 68, <laughs> you guys were like, we want to go home. What that do you remember actually, about that? Yeah, what do you remember about that? I literally remember coming out of the airport and it's like you have to turn the corner and walk to where the bus was. And it might have been yeah. 20 yards and the, the, the frosty air just hits you in the face. Boom. It's yeah. something different. It is, like that is the Canada that people talk about when they talk about Canada. It was, a, it was an experience. I remember two guys got frostbite on their fingers so bad they couldn't play in the game during practice. Oh, mm -hmm. man, it was, it was crazy. But um, it was an experience, you know, because that's, that's CFL football. Like the Ryder fans, you got to have so much respect for them because they came out in droves. And walking to the stadium or walking away from the stadium after the game, it was just like, it was like a college town in like the deep south of the United States. Like every single person was draped out in green. And it was one of those things where it's like, even though we were on the wrong side of that game, it was kind of memorable 
because you were a part of a moment where like a team played a championship game at home and you felt that energy. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I know. And well, I had a lot of good friends on your team. And I remember Fan 2 saying afterwards, if we had to lose, I'm glad it was to these guys. And I think Tillman had a similar thought. Kanji was on that team and obviously Hank. That was a special team. Just it was, I think it was going to be Saskatchewan's day that day. Courtney, uh, well, I hope that you stick close to the CFL because you got a lot to offer. Uh, do you have plans on doing that? Uh, you know, as much as I can, I would love to because um, I told I told this to a few people uh, within the organization, but in high school, I played four years um, as a Turner Fenton Trojan. In college, I went to Wilfrid Laurier for two years. I transferred. I went to Northern Illinois. I was a Husky for three years, um, but I was a Ticat for six. So really, this is my team. And, you know, the fans, the community, those little kids who come ask you for an autograph or a picture, those are the ones who really make you what you are. They're the ones who put you up there and uh, hold you in that regard. So to be able to pay it forward or pay it back, where, however you see it, um, that's a great opportunity. It's a privilege. So um, for a community that's given me so much, uh, I'd love to stay tapped in. And I live nearby, so it's not like I'm going to be going anywhere. So they're going to have to really do their best to get rid of me if they don't want to see me anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, they, uh, you know they won't. Courtney, it's been a, a pleasure to meet you virtually, and uh, congrats on a fine career, and I, I wish you all the best moving ahead. Thank you very much. It's been fun. CFL veteran Courtney Steven joining us from the GTA. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.